Emma, any last words? Okay, we'll say we'll assume that's a no. I guess I guess I have one more then. Okay, that's fine. When you open with your breathing and you're supposed to be breathing through lower back, is that what we should be trying to do all the time? Uh, uh not necessarily. So, okay. uh, it's everything is about the condition. So, you're trying to so like let's talk about the philosophy concepts and principles a little bit before we wrap up because I think this will be a useful um, useful discussion. So under under the we we divide the Trend into the three big pieces right under philosophy concepts and principles. Uh, the the parts of the training system. So under part one is how to unify uh, how to fi say unify yourself, right? So that is mental and physical. So first you unify the body as balancing the 13 points. But you do that with your balancing and using the attention. So as long as you're feeling yourself, then as unifying mental and physical. So mind and body is one. But then you're also unifying the physical in the sense of that you're balancing, you need to balance the physical. The second step, and so this is all basic exercises, right? It's all 21 form and the butterfly form. Butterfly form, okay? The second step of training is unify with everything else. All right, so we start by saying with the opponent and the small, that's the small picture, but really what does the opponent represent? The opponent represents time and space because is their body in three dimensions and how their body is changing in three dimensions. I step forward, I step back, left, right, I move up and down. My hand is moving farther away, closer to my body as your opponent. And you're trying to match those changes. That all comes down to time and space. So you can say matching with time and space is matching with, you can say, the environment like your surrounding environment. It'd be nice if I could spell and I'd be a horrible college professor. Environment. I'm embarrassed because I got so many people from other countries on the line and I'm not representing the US education system very well. <laughs> right, so time and space, right? It's harmonizing with the environment. So we can say there's a boundary here, right? This boundary is going to be your sense doors. So that means it's smell, it's sight, it's hearing, it's touch, right? The, um, and the, the, the body sense, proprioception, conception, like all the feeling, the physical feeling, and the mental state, right? The, the boundary is the sense doors. So from the sense door, you have everything internal yourself and then you have everything external to the sense door so unifying yourself you're bringing attention to the sense door and you're harmonizing from the sense door internally when you unify with time and space you unify with the environment you're unifying everything on both sides of the sense door. I'm balancing myself, mind and body, and I harmonize my body with everything that's external to my sense doors. So when we talk about harmonizing with everything that is external, when we talk about harmonizing everything with the environment then, what we're talking about is the conditions. 
right? Everything comes down to harmonizing with the conditions. So then is what we're talking about then is right action. What determines right action? What determines what's right and what's wrong? In this case, is right action means what is appropriate to the conditions, right? So again, since we are talking about, the question was regarding the breathing and how to harmonize the breathing like moment to moment. Now, let's just say, like, what if I said, like, you should always be breathing, never let, because uh, like what we do talk about, right? We say, don't let the movement interfere with the breath, right? So you should always be breathing all the time. Never hold your breath. But what about when you're underwater? What is the right action when it comes to breathing when you're underwater? Of course, under those conditions, the, the, the right action is to hold your breath even though normally we talk about don't hold your breath, right? Don't let your movement interfere with your breathing. But because the conditions change, now you're underwater, of course, now the right action, what is appropriate for that condition is to hold the breath. <clears throat> so how, how we want to breathe then, in terms of like what I was saying previously about that as I inhale, and I wanna make sure that I'm not breathing vertically. In other words, that I'm not opening up the chest during the inhale because this yin energy, I wanna keep the yin below horizontal all the time. So I'm breathing in, I feel energy still moving down. I'm breathing out, I still have energy moving out. And I create a little loop in my body in order to maintain that energy all the time of like, even though I breathe in, See my hand move down a little bit because I'm dropping, uh, like anatomically, I'm using a bit more of my intercostal muscles to keep this energy moving down, even though I breathe in. So I can breathe into my back a little bit more and let the back expand. Sometimes uh, they'll talk about this exercise, like this kind of breathing as like crocodile breathing, or sometimes they call it like horizontal breathing because I want to breathe in to my back a little bit, I breathe out, let it go. Now, that is sort of a general rule and it applies especially when, so like the balance of the 13 points, right? So uh, one quote that I like very much from sports is that you don't wanna live in your sports posture, right? Like that athletic posture all the time that we talk about, which basically is the balance of 13 points, the macrocosmic. Uh, I need to be able to have a full range of motion. So for instance, if I'm, when I need to reach up to like get something off the top of the refrigerator or the highest shelf, or if I'm going to throw something overhead, of course, I want to be able to open up. So it's like balancing your breathing with this macrocosmic energy cycle is entirely dependent on the condition. So it's when you need to harmonize Again, like with an opponent, when you need to be able to generate some power against an opponent, you need to be balanced with the macrocosmic. Outside of that, like in day-to-day -day life, you need to be able to go to both extremes. So that, like when we, that, that's stretching, right? So I want to open up. And so uh, a good example of that would be from this week's newsletter and the article that I wrote about the, the breathing. And how, like, as we get older, if we don't exercise our, our rib cage and our breathing muscles to go to the extreme, so opening all the way up, expanding as much as I can, and then condensing and getting as small as I can. Like, and that, that was this exercise from, again, from the newsletter, is to expand the ribs, condense the ribs, expand the ribs, and I want to go beyond the limit because I need to maintain that volume of breathing for health. So uh, long story short, for health and for martial, sometimes are two different things. 
but as one is not better than the other is like which one is appropriate at that time. 